Hey everyone, so the BAFTAs were on a few nights ago, uh, so now that we know the winners there, it's time for me to predict the winners of the 2024 SAG Awards. I did appallingly at the BAFTAs, my predictions were very off this year, so I kind of need to redeem myself with the SAGs this year, uh, which shouldn't be too hard, there's only six categories that I'm going to be predicting in this video. Also, now that we're in the home stretch of awards season, I am going to be pouring all my time, energy, and resources into making a lot of Oscars content in the next few weeks, guys. A lot of deep dive discussions, a lot of predictions, so if you don't want to miss any of that, be sure to click subscribe, turn that little bell if you want to get notified when the next video goes live. Also, if you want to help me with my channel, you can hit that little thumbs up button and let me know in the comment section down below, who are you predicting for the SAG Awards this year. All right then, enough chit chat, let's get the show on the road with the first category. I'm gonna start things off with outstanding performance by a stunt ensemble. In this category, we have Barbie, yes, The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, John Wick Chapter 4, and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Right then, so who do I think is gonna win best stunts? Well, first of all, I think we can rule Barbie out because I don't really see Barbie as a stunts movie, nor will anybody else, so it's not gonna have enough support to win stunts. The fact that it got the nomination alone is kind of gobsmacking. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, not a lot of people really like that movie, so I can't see a lot of people wanting to get behind it, so I'm ruling that one out. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did have that really cool choreographed uh, scene down the corridor, that was impressive, and we have seen with the SAGs before that they aren't afraid to give this award to a superhero movie. Past superhero films that have won this have been Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984, Black Panther and Avengers Endgame, but I don't think they're gonna give it to a superhero movie this year, and I don't think that's just because of superhero fatigue. I think there's just two better franchise movies in here which are all about the stunts, and it's even gonna go to John Wick Chapter 4 or Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. My initial instinct was to go for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 because it's a Tom Cruise movie, and normally stunts are a major selling point of his movies. I mean, that bike jump off the cliff alone was heavily featured in the marketing for this film. It's the type of high concept, jaw-dropping stunts which get people talking. Plus, Top Gun Maverick won this award last year and people just love watching Tom Cruise doing all these crazy stunts. But then there's John Wick Chapter 4, which I personally would prefer to see win. This is actually the first time that a John Wick film has been nominated for Best Stunts at SAG which is ridiculous considering that John Wick is one of the most renowned franchises for stunts and action choreography. What I love about John Wick Chapter 4 is the sheer array of stunts that are on display in this film. Like you've got action sequences involving you know, fist fights as well as like nunchucks, you've got that cool bird's eye aerial tracking shot through the house, you know, that was very extensively choreographed, as well as, you know, the iconic you know, fight up and down the staircase scene in France. And with John Wick Chapter 4, I know Keanu does a lot of his own stunts, but it really does feel like a stunt ensemble, you know, like a team effort. Whereas with Mission Impossible, while I know there were other stuntmen involved, it's really more about what crazy thing can we get Tom Cruise to do next, you know? So it's more of like, what has Tom Cruise done now? So it does make me wonder how our SAG voters gonna play it. Are they gonna go, let's go with the movie which has Tom Cruise doing all the death-defying stunts himself, or do we go for the movie which really shows an eclectic range of different stunts by a whole team rather than just one main actor. So yeah, this is actually a tough category. I, it's gonna come down to one of those two. Interestingly, Mission Impossible Fallout was nominated in this category, uh, but it lost to Black Panther that year, which does give me pause for thought because the, the stunts in that Mission Impossible movie were equally as jaw-dropping, and they still didn't go for it there. Which is making me think, hmm, maybe they might not go Mission Impossible again, but you know, it had, it's, been, it's been one of the most you know, action-packed franchises for so long with so many great stunts and like it, it deserves recognition for the incredible stunt work. But yeah, that past behavior of the SAG Awards is, is giving me doubt that they, they might not be on the Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible stunt bandwagon. And part of me does think there might actually be more passion for John Wick than Mission Impossible. So yeah, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 has the bigger crazier, more ambitious stunts, you know, the real office water cooler type stunts that you want to talk about with your co-workers. And I do feel like the Mission Impossible franchise is overdue for some recognition for what it does in getting people to go to the cinema to see the stunts. There's been seven Mission Impossible films, and it's never really had its moment in the spotlight to be celebrated. But John Wick Chapter 4 has just as equally impressive stunts, to be honest. Oh, this one is tough. Like, 
I feel like the safer instinct is to go with Mission Impossible because that movie really screams stunts to me. Uh, but I don't know, John Wick Chapter 4 I just feel might have a bit more passion. So I'm gonna take a risk here and predict that the SAG Stunt Ensemble Award this year will go to John Wick Chapter 4. Don't feel great about it, uh, but yeah, I, f I feel like it might just happen, so I'm gonna go with John Wick Chapter 4. All right then, let's move on to the individual acting awards now. Let's start off with the easier categories to predict, the supporting categories. Let's do ladies first and we'll go with best supporting actress. I think you all know what I'm gonna predict here, Divine Joy Randolph for the holdovers, okay? This feels pretty certain. She has been sweeping all award seasons. She's won the most trophies out of any actor this year. Both the critics and the industry love this performance. Divine Joy Randolph is beloved by actors. She's been giving great speeches at all these uh, televised award shows. She's being championed right now, okay? It's her time. I thought if there was one place where she might miss, it might be BAFTA, like she might just end up losing to Someone who has the home turf advantage like Emily Blunt or Claire Foy or Rosamund Pike, but no, it didn't happen. She still won at BAFTA. Is anybody at SAG a threat to Divine like Emily Blunt? Um, I know Emily Blunt did the surprise win back in 2019 for A Quiet Place, uh, but I don't think that lightning is going to strike twice again in this category for Emily Blunt. Uh, and I also think like her performance in A Quiet Place is so, so much better than her performance in Oppenheimer. Don't get me wrong, love the performance in Oppenheimer, but you know, the one in her quiet place is just so much more, it's on another level, I think, you know, to what she gives in Oppenheimer. And yeah, she should have been nominated for an Oscar for uh, the performance in a quiet place. Yep, uh, <laughs> but still, I digress. And if Emily Blunt couldn't win a BAFTA for Oppenheimer, you know, the film that BAFTA championed, giving it seven wins, uh, then it seems unlikely that, you know, actors are gonna change course with Dave Joe Randolph and switch to Emily Blunt at this point. It, uh, yeah, I just don't see it happening, so yeah. Safe prediction, I feel very confident about this. The best supporting actress at SAG 2024 is gonna go to Dave Ainjo Randolph for The Holdovers. All right, next, let's talk about best supporting actor. You all know it, you know what I'm gonna say. It's Robert Downey Jr. for playing Louis Strauss in Oppenheimer. Like Divine, this feels pretty much locked in for Robert Downey Jr. It's also his time. He is beloved by actors and he's had such an incredible comeback of a career. He's long been one of the biggest names in Hollywood thanks to his casting as Tony Stark in the MCU, but now that he's stepped away from that role, he's found the perfect part to showcase what else he can do as an actor, and he really delivered. He has the momentum, he's been collecting all the trophies, Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, now BAFTA, and yeah, we've really enjoyed watching him, you know, on the stage, giving these very funny, charming speeches. It's been so lovely to see him on the stage, you know, getting his flowers, and I think it is gonna happen for him again at SAG. Is anybody else in this category a threat to Robert Downey Jr.? It feels like all awards season that Ryan Gosling has been Downey Jr.'s closest competition, but again, it just seems like Robert Downey Jr. is so much further ahead in the race than all his other competitors. He is comfortably out in front. So at this point, I don't really have much reason to entertain the idea that Ryan Gosling could end up surprising at SAG, I don't think it's gonna happen. So yeah, my final prediction for the 2024 Best Supporting Actor at SAG will be Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Okay, so next up, let's do Best Actress. Now, there is some stuff to discuss here in light of Emma Stone's recent win at BAFTA. Now that Sandra Hula lost the BAFTA to Emma Stone, it's put Emma Stone in the prime position to go all the way and win the Oscar. She's won everything. Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, BAFTA. Okay, she has swept everything so far. And she's also the only Best Actress Oscar contender who has been nominated at every prior precursor. She has everything that she needs to collect her second Best Actress Oscar on March 10th. The pathway is lit for her. There's just one last obstacle that stands in her way, and that is Lily Gladstone at SAG. Just a reminder that Sandra Hula wasn't nominated at SAG, and she didn't win at BAFTA, so her odds of winning the Oscar now have been slashed dramatically. Like, it's never happened before that a Best Actress winner at Oscar managed to win without at least a SAG nomination. Well, at least it hasn't happened in the 30 years that SAG has been around. So yeah, as much as I love Sandra Hula, she would need to overcome some pretty big stats and odds in order to win just the Oscar at this point. So now that I can pretty much rule Sandra Hula out of winning the Oscar, the narrative has now gone back to the Battle of the Stones, or the Stone Age, if you will. But who is gonna triumph at SAG? Emma Stone has the momentum right now. Gladstone has more wins in the Critics' 
groups. And she also has the history making narrative on her side of potentially being the first ever indigenous American woman to win in this category. But what I'd say is holding Lily Gladstone back from being an assured victor is the fact that there is still a little bit of debate and ambiguity surrounding whether some voters think they view it as a lead performance or a supporting performance. There's no doubt in anybody's minds that Emma Stone as Bella Baxter is the main focal character in Poor Things, but there are some people that still view Lily Gladstone's performance as more of a supporting role. Regardless of where you personally stand on Gladstone being a lead or a supporting, she would still be absolutely deserving to win this prize. But when we're pulling at straws trying to determine who the winner is going to be, it's factors like that which can make a big difference. Like, if there is some ambiguity surrounding a person's performance, whether it be leader or supporting, that might, you know, be enough to deter a voter from voting for that person if they don't think they're in the right category. So yeah, when it comes to my prediction, I think that SAG are gonna go with Emma Stone. And that's not just because there's a little bit of debate about Gladstone's status as a leader or supporting. That does come into play, but I think it's more the type of the performance that SAG would go for, Emma Stone's in Poor Things, I mean, because it's a bigger transformational role, it's more physical, and there's a lot of character growth throughout the film. Recent past winners in this category have been Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Viola Davis for Mara Release Back Bottom, and Renee Zellweger in Judy. They're all big transformational roles, and you know, Emma Stone as Bella Baxter feels more akin to those types of performances than Lily Gladstone's as Molly in uh, Kills of the Flower Moons is. Gladstone's performance as Molly is more restrained than Emma Stone's as Bella Baxter, okay? A lot of her performance is going on underneath the surface, okay? She conveys a lot of rage and betrayal and confusion through her demeanor, her body language, through her eyes, okay? It's very subtextual and it's very subtle and with the SAGs, they don't often go for the subtle types of acting. They, they prefer acting that they can see, like what Emma Stone's doing in Poor Things. With her performance as Bella Baxter, it's a very physically demanding role, showing that evolutional growth of Bella as a person with her body language, her you know verbal skills, and just the way she carries herself. You really do see her grow throughout the film, and it's a very rewarding experience of watching her transform throughout the movie. So yeah, I am predicting that Emma Stone is gonna win the SAG for Best Actress, and then she's gonna get that last minute surge while Oscar voting's taking place, and she's gonna end up winning that second Oscar as well. That's what I believe is gonna happen. But there's still a chance that Lily Gladstone could win the SAG. I just think it is gonna go to Emma Stone, but if Lily Gladstone Stone does pull off a win at SAG, then it's gonna make the Oscars night race for Best Actress even more exciting because she will definitely still be in the race. If she wins the SAG, gives a really good speech, right as final Oscar voting is taking place, you know, it might just do enough to win her that Best Actress Oscar trophy. But yeah, I, I do think it's still gonna go to Emma Stone, but part of me also really does wanna see Lily Gladstone win here and then have a really tight race going into Oscars night. But yeah, I'm still predicting that Emma Stone is gonna win the SAG for Best Actress 2024. And a fun little fact for you guys, if Emma Stone does end up winning her second SAG, she will join a very exclusive club of only four women to ever win two Best Actress in a Leading Role trophies at the SAG Awards. She'll join the likes of Frances McDormand, Viola Davis, and Renee Zellweger, but Emma Stone will have the bragging right of being the youngest person to ever accomplish winning to Best Actress trophies at SAG at the age of 35. So congrats to her in advance. All right, so the last of the individual acting categories is Outstanding Male Performance in a Leading Role. And in this category, we've got Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. This is officially the tightest race of the four acting categories because the two supporting categories feel pretty much locked in at this point. We have a clear front runner now in Best Actress, but when it comes to Best Actor, it really does feel like it's coming down to the wire. It's like neck and neck, a two-way race between Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers and Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. It's really close because they both have a Golden Globe, but Paul Giamatti has the Critics' Choice Award and Killian Murphy has the BAFTA. So right now it's pretty level. There's pros for each of them. Like Killian Murphy is the titular role in one of the biggest movies of the year and what 
is presumed to be the best picture frontrunner at the Oscars. Whereas Paul Giamatti has the whole career narrative. Someone who's been at it for a long time, a consummate professional, very well liked and loved, respected within the industry. Many people see Paul Giamatti as someone overdue for recognition. So yeah, with this best actor race, it's a tough one to call who I think is gonna win the Oscar, but when it comes to who's gonna win the SAG, I do think it is gonna go to Paul Giamatti for the holdovers. I know there's a lot of love for Killian Murphy. He's a talent who also, you know, has been overlooked for a while and deserves recognition of himself, but Paul Giamatti is Paul Giamatti, you know? The man is just cherished by so many people, okay? Nobody has a bad word to say about him. The acting community adores him, and I think there is a collective energy amongst the acting community to finally honor him, okay? It's his time. He's also been in the game a lot longer than Killian Murphy has. He really is so respected. Divine Joy Randolph, uh, in her BAFTA acceptance, acceptance speech, took the time to really praise Paul Giamatti for his work ethic, who he, his character, who he is as a man, as a performer. You represent everything that is true and good about this craft. Your generosity, curiosity, and rigor. She really lifted him up, you know, really shone a light on him. And I really think that speech of hers is really gonna help propel um, uh, Paul Giamatti to the finish line at the Oscars as well. It gives people an emotional reason to vote for him. But this isn't just, you know, a narrative win for Paul Giamatti because he's seen as overdue, okay? The performance that he gives in The Holdovers speaks for itself, okay? Like, the character was written by David Hemmingson and Alexander Payne with Paul Giamatti in mind, okay? The part of Paul was written for Paul Giamatti. Like, there was not another actor on the planet that could have done a better job with this role than Paul Giamatti. It is a wonderful performance, one that's funny and also tugs at your heartstrings. And again, like Best Actress, I kind of do have to go back to that argument that SAG typically do go for, you know, the bigger performances where they can see the acting. And when it comes to Killian Murphy, again, like Lily Gladstone, his performance is, a lot of it is beneath the surface, okay? It's uh, very internalized, it's very subtextual. Uh, it does a lot of conveying his feelings and emotions through his eyes, okay? And I love that it's, it's not really a showy performance. Like the film is showy, Oppenheimer, but his performance is so centered and grounded and so realistic. He doesn't often feel the need to go to grand displays of emotion in order to convey how the character's feeling. And that's a whole different skill set, uh, which should be championed at SAGs, honestly. But yeah, when it comes to track record and history, they, they, they like to go with what they can see, and Paul G. Mai's performance feels like a performance that, you know, actors would probably go for more so than what Killian Murphy's doing in Oppenheimer. That's just how I see it. So yeah, my final prediction for best actor at the 2024 SAGs is Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers. Okay, so the last category that we have is SAG Ensemble. In this category, we have American Fiction, Barbie, The Color Purple, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Oppenheimer. I actually think this is the hardest category to call at the SAGs this year. This is one of those years where I can genuinely see it going to any one of the five. I am not sure which direction they're gonna go here. I can make a case for any of them. Oppenheimer is the best picture frontrunner. It's been collecting all the trophies under the sun and yeah, SAG Ensemble is essentially SAG's equivalent to Best Picture at the Oscars. So they might just give it to Oppenheimer, you know, another one for the pile. Barbie is the fun crowd pleaser, which you can see actors getting excited about, like past winners, like uh, Parasite, Black Panther, Hidden Figures, and everything ever all at once. American Fiction is the funny hot topic movie of the year with an incredible cast and has been Getting a little bit of steam recently with its win for Best Adapted Screenplay at BAFTA. Like, there is more support for this film than I think people realize. The Color Purple is the big, dazzling musical movie with a lot of big performances, which I can see actors appreciating. And Killers of the Flower Moon did a wonderful job of casting authentic uh, indigenous actors to play those parts, you know? Like, it was great representation for, you know, a community that has been sidelined in cinema for so long. And all five of these films do have individual acting nominations as well. Oppenheimer has the most, it's got three. Uh, Barbie, American Fiction and Killers have two and uh, The Color Purple has one. I genuinely could see SAG going for Killers of the Flower Moon here because SAG do like to be cool and you know rally behind a group that needs championing sometimes, like with CODA for deaf actors. Um, last year with Everything Ever All At Once, no predominantly Asian actors getting their moment in the spotlight. And a few years ago with Parasite with a all Korean cast, none of them spoke English, but yeah, they were also all 
snubbed for individual actor nominations, but they got behind Parasite to give, you know, the whole ensemble a win there. That was really cool. And I can see them wanting to give it to Killers because that way they're honoring, you know, indigenous actors. And this would be their way of showing inclusivity to a minority that has been marginalized in the industry for so long. However, when you look at the actual ballot for Killers of the Fire Moon SAG Ensemble entry, there's only two indigenous actors on the ballot, okay? You've got Lily Gladstone and Tantu Cardinal. The, the rest of the people on the ballot are predominantly white men. Where are the rest of the Burkhart sisters on the ballot? Like Cara Jade Myers or Gillian Dion or Janai Collins. So if Killers does end up winning this category and the cast goes up there to collect it, it's not gonna be great optics, is it? If it's, you know, predominantly white men on the stage and only two indigenous women, hopefully the rest of the cast will go up there with them. Um, but yeah, hopefully they'll give the spotlight to uh, Lily Gladstone or any of the other indigenous actresses or actors on the stage to give the speech. So yeah, I do think Killers could win this. Barbie would be a cool win, okay? It's a film I can definitely see actors getting behind. The fact it also got into stunts is like giving me a suspicion that maybe they do really like Barbie. The actual ensemble is quite diverse, which is a plus, and it does have two individual acting nominations for Robbie and Gosling. Oppenheimer though is the best picture frontrunner though, and it's got three individual acting nominations for uh, Murphy, Blunt, and Danny Jr. They may just follow suit like the rest of award season and go all in on Oppenheimer. It could happen, okay? It was a crowd pleaser. But yeah, it's just not as cool of a win as say Barbie or The Color Purple or American Fiction. And I'm wondering if some SAG voters will be like, well, Oppenheimer is winning all these trophies already. Do we need to give it SAG Ensemble as well? They may want to champion something else or they may not. But yeah, this is such a tough year because there's so many juicy options here and it's hard to tell which way they're gonna go. Over the last few weeks, the love for Barbie and Killers does seem to have cooled off, but that doesn't mean a particular group like actors won't get behind one of them for SAG Ensemble. Oppenheimer is a predominantly male and mostly Caucasian cast. In terms of diversity, it's not showing a whole lot, but you can't argue with the caliber of the performances from the entire ensemble in Oppenheimer. Everyone was so well cast. But to some voters, it's more exciting to pick something like American Fiction or Barbie. Oppenheimer is almost expected at this point because it does feel like it's gonna go all the way and win Best Picture at the Oscars and a win at SAG Ensemble, you know, would definitely cement that theory even more than it already has. But like, it feels comfortably winning Best Picture, which is why it would be nice to see something else win here and give it a little bit of a challenge, you know, going into Oscars night, like Barbie or um, American Fiction or even Killers. Like obviously The Color Purple isn't nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Personally, I would rather see it go to something other than Oppenheimer here because it just makes that last little, you know, stretch for the Best Picture Oscar just a little bit more interesting. At this point, Oppenheimer has it in the bag, but <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to just entertain the idea that maybe something like Barbie could maybe potentially win on a preferential ballot, you know? That would be nice. <laughs> so yeah, who am I gonna predict for this category? Um, well, Killers is their chance for SAG to make history, you know, giving it to a cast that includes authentic indigenous people. Uh, Oppenheimer feels almost like the safest pick here because it's, you know, front runner in so many categories, it's got a lot of momentum and buzz surrounding it. People really love that film. Barbie feels like a movie more akin to what SAG would usually go for. And I genuinely could just see American Fiction or The Color Purple surprising here because reasons. My initial gut instinct when they announced this category was that Barbie was going to win here. Seeing how Barbie has done recently at the BAFTAs and certain guilds has given me pause for thought because it does seem to have run out of a little steam recently. So yeah, I don't feel as assured with Barbie now as I did a few weeks ago. But a part of me still believes a lot of actors would still vote for it. My initial gut feeling was Barbie and seeing as though I can't really make it heads or tails of this category, I do kind of want to stick with that initial gut feeling because that's instinctual. I'm not confident about it, but I'm going to predict that the 2024 SAG Ensemble Award goes to the cast of Barbie. But yeah, we'll find out on Saturday, right? I will be watching the SAGs on Saturday, guys, and doing a reaction video and a discussion. If you have any questions for me to answer in that video, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed the video, help me out with a little thumbs up button. Please do let me know your your SAG predictions in the Oscars section down below as well. I really wanna hear from you, especially SAG Ensemble. Who's winning there? I don't know. Uh, yeah, if, if you want more movie TV and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.